For the Ole Miss Rebels, the 2015 baseball season has been filled with highs. He's got it! And the Ole Miss Rebels have beat the number one Gators again! And lows. And that's going to do it as Tennessee wins today 4-2 to two to take the series two games to one. At two games under 500 in conference play, the Rebels would host Alabama, looking to make a run toward the postseason. We got to be who we are. We can't all of a sudden lose our patience and, and get lazy because we're not having maybe the season we thought we were going to have. You're tired? Really? Come on. Man, this is what, what you live for. You got to be tougher. That's what we got to be. That's what will get us through. See, we'll be tough enough and we'll be tougher than Alabama because we've been through more than them. Somebody's going to make a run. Somebody's going to sprint to the finish line. Why not be us? You got to get out of the scoreboard. You got to get out of the negative feeling. You got to bring energy. You got to put those blinders on and you got to run. That's why they put those blinders on the horses, right? So they can just run. They don't have to look at the horse next to them. They just run. We play uh, uh, 12 conference games left. And we got nine of them at home. Man, it's great to be at Swayze. It's great to be home. So let's finish at home. Coming into the day, the Rebels knew they needed to start hot. With runners in scoring position, freshman Will Golson would provide a spark. No score, bottom of the first, but Ole Miss threatening. First and second and no out. There they go. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball left side, and it is through for a base hit. It almost hit. The Rebels take a one to nothing lead. You got runners at the corner. The 2-0 pitch to Bortles. Swung on, line drive, base yeah. hit to left. This will score a run. Golson stays at second, and the Rebels lead two to nothing. And Bortles got to a hitter's count, got a fat one, and picks up his 35th RBI of the year. After surrendering two early runs, the tide would stop the bleeding. It would take them one inning and one pitch to cut the deficit in half. It is a high fly ball left field. That ball's hit well. Watson on the run. Woodman on the run at the wall. It's gone. Solo shot, and the wind helped that one get out of here. And it's now 2-1 to one as Alabama cuts the lead in half. The Rebels escaped the second, holding tight to a 2-1 to one lead. But with momentum shifting back to the tide, the Rebels needed a boost. Sykes Orvis would provide a lift. Ole Miss 2, Alabama 1. Bottom half of the third with a run at first and one down. Lifted left field, well stroked, and a long run for Avant. He can't get there. It hits up against the wall. Golson was going all the way. He touched the score. He'll try to score. Here's the throw to the plate, and he is safe. To an oppo double for Sykes Orvis. They had the, the outfield. Usually, like they try to put the shift on the infield, and uh, it's kind of annoying. But they put one on the outfield, which I've never seen before, and. Uh, we had a pitch uh, on the outer half, kind of just slapped it, and uh, it would have been just a normal routine fly ball, but they had that shift on there, so it was able to drop in for a double, and, uh, and Golson flies, so he was able to score from first. After an Orvis RBI in the third, and a dominant fourth from Christian Trent, the Rebels found themselves with another chance to shift the tide. You can be mature and say, I'm just going to do my job. I can get RBIs. Or you can go for you know, a home run and swing at bad pitches and all of that. You still may hit a home run, but we need at-bats right here. Put the game away right here with your at-bats, right? After a single, leadoff single by Deshaun, Taylor Gilbo was pulled, and Jay Shaw, the relief pitcher, in. So first and second, here's the pitch. Green light, fly ball, left field. That ball is crushed, and it is gone. A three-run homer for Colby Bortles. You're going to get 3-0 hit. Don't be late. Get the barrel of the ball, and that's exactly what Colby did. Got it up in the wind, hit it hard. There was absolutely no doubt about that. Hit it well. He was throwing pretty hard. Uh, getting the green light uh, from Coach Clem, from Coach B, uh, I was surprised. And then uh, he threw a fastball over the middle, so I had to swing. And, and I knew it was gone, especially with the wind blowing out. I knew it was gone, so uh, I figured I'd watch it for a little while. Although the Rebels now led 6-1, to one, they had yet to knock the tide off their feet. A walk and a single in the top of the fifth had the tide ready to roll. 
Mike Bianco is slowly walking out to the hill to visit with Christian Trent. So he just finally scored you six runs, and yeah, you walked the leadoff guy, and everybody knows that you shouldn't walk that guy, yeah. right? Then go to the next guy and throw the next pitch instead of throwing everything high and getting frustrated. That's what we need you to do, yeah. all right? We need you to make pitches so we can win the game. So let's go after the next guy, and let's get, get, get a double play ball and be the guy that you're supposed to be, right? And run off the inning, all right? Let's go, come on. All right, it's now six to two, and Alabama's a hit from getting back in a game right here. Second and third, two down, the pitch. Swing and a miss, instead he elevated a fastball at 91 and blew it by him and now pulled it in. Hey, hey, that's what I'm talking about. Yo, you gotta make the pitches, right? You gotta do it, right? You be the man. I really thought, you know, it might be his best performance of the year, certainly one of the best. Um, I, I thought really he was in command, but really once he got going, I think uh, after he got through the, you know, the third or fourth inning, uh, you know, he started to find his rhythm and uh, one of those games where as the game got on, it seemed like he got stronger and stronger. I felt like almost that the game was over in a sense. Uh, you could really tell the momentum had swung in our, in our favor, and it was kind of just going out there and throwing strikes and filling up the zone, you know, not giving them the free bases and the great pitches to hit, and I just felt like I could uh, keep rolling. The Rebels would add four more runs in the following innings. With a comfortable 10-2 lead, and after eight innings of play, Christian Trent's day was finally over. Huh? I just finished. I, want to finish. I know you did, but but that's 115, and we're up by eight, and you're gonna pitch next Friday. That was good. I mean, really, I would have let you go if it was if it was closer. With one inning to play, the Rebels would bring in Drake Robinson to finish the tie. Drake Robinson looks to second base and delivers. Ground ball left side, that is a base hit. Left fielder Watson charging. Salem's gonna try to score. Here's a throw to the plate. One hop, tag, and he's out of there. That's the end of the game. Well, I think you know, anytime you win, you know, Friday night it, uh, or the first game of the series, it, it's big and it kind of sets the tone for, for the weekend. Uh, but we always talk about that game two. That game two is what we call swing game. And uh, the swing game means you either you're going to even it. If you lost the first game, you get to even it up in the second game. Or if you won the first game, it's an opportunity to win the series in, in game two. And uh, the only way that you can win the series in game two is if you win game one. Today was terrific. And a lot of guys, obviously, with 17 hits, had had really good days. I want that to happen again, and it can in the second game if you're ready to go, all right? So there's food in there if you want to hang out, hang out. To win tonight, we got to be mentally ready. We were more ready than them today. And you know, they hit some balls hard. We made some great defensive plays, but then all of a sudden, you know, our energy took over and uh, we, they were no match for us today. All right, congratulations. We just finished the game. I'm gonna get some food with some of the guys. As you can see, you got the uh, weird Drake already got food. Did you shower? No, sorry. Uh, okay. Sean, good hair. This is young Kaiser. So we got some spaghetti. Oh, LB's. LB's spaghetti? Yeah. Shout out to LB's. A little carb load. Mmm. A little garlic bread. Should be eating this much of my, my girlish figure. It's definitely in the spot. I went with salad. I got a little bit of everything today. I'm trying to eat a little healthy, get a little salad. I'm a big fan of the regular. Not as much as spicy, but the regular. I'm all about the meat. I'm just gonna take a little two-hour break. Um, I, we get to leave. We're gonna go do our thing for a little bit, uh, rest and relax, and then we're gonna come back at 6:15 and get ready to uh, beat beat Alabama for the second game. As the sun set over Swayze, Game Two of the day-night doubleheader was set to begin. Yeah, this is a great scene for baseball here in Oxford. But especially tonight when the weather's the way beautiful. Redshirt sophomore Brady Bramlett would take the mound for the Rebels. With Alabama threatening in the first, Bramlett would answer. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Strikes out the side with a double mixed in. Throwing in, that, in front of that large of a crowd, especially at Swayze, it's just crazy. Honestly, from the minute I started warming up, my adrenaline was pumping. Just hearing people yell out in the outfield, let's go Brady, go get him today. In the bottom half of the inning, Alabama freshman Jake Walters would find trouble of his own. Walked him, bases loaded for Ole Miss here in the first. Here's Zero Robinson. Run it, run it, run it. Walters to first, and he gets out of the jam. Ole Miss leaves him loaded in the first. The 
throughout the following three innings, a defensive struggle would ensue, with neither Bramlett nor Walters willing to crack. In the fifth, Ole Miss would break through. Bring it in here! We need to shorten our swings so we can get some swings off. Every swing we take, it doesn't matter if it's 0 one 0 2 0 doesn't matter. Looks like we got two strikes, we're uncomfortable. So shorten the swings and be on time. Get some base runners and get a base hit. This might be the best crowd of the year. We gotta get them into it, right? They're waiting for you to do something. Let's go do it, let's go. Tate Blackman to right field with a base hit. That is the fourth hit for Ole Miss here tonight. Ground ball, this could be two to end the inning and it skips over White's head. And the top of the order, and Connor Cloyd comes up. Again, this guy has been swinging a great bat, hitting 415. Line drive, base hit left field. Yes, yes. Go, Jay! Go, Jay! Blackman being waved around. Here comes the throw to be off target, and Ole Miss breaks out in front here in the fifth inning, one to nothing. When you shorten up your swing, you give yourself a little more time to see the pitch and give yourself a little more opportunity uh, to make better contact. And when you talk about shortening up your swing, nobody's got a shorter swing on the team than Connor Cloyd, a guy that seems to take all the bad pitches, swings at all the good pitches, and you know, certainly that was a huge hit for us. The game remained a stalemate as both starting pitchers were able to stifle their opposing offense. In the eighth, with Alabama threatening, Rebel skipper Mike Bianco would turn to his bullpen. Great effort, man, great effort. No, awesome, man, proud of you, proud of you. Hey, got to knock the ball down, keep it in the infield, right? More important to keep it in the infield than to get the out. Don't want the ball going to the outfield. And he'll turn it over to Scott Weathersby. You know, Brady's really delivered for us all year long and, of course, delivered again on Saturday night. And when we got to that point and you got Scott warmed up in the bullpen, there's, there's no reason not to go to Scott. Okay, runner at second, Big Haney, the catcher, not good at breaking balls, right? But he probably thinks you're going to throw, we'll throw not just in the middle, throw it away. But at 1-0, we'll go another one right there. Let's go finish it right here. Keep the ball in the infield. Let's go. Weathersby has been just lights out from bullpen. Haney struck out once. Oh, hit hard, but there's Will Golson to make the catch. Need a big one right here. Stay ready, go, but I think we're going to bring short and face it's left, right, left. And uh, unless something happens, we get a couple runs, we may run you back out there. So I don't want you to kind of get out of that mode, but I think we're going short right okay. now, all right? Yeah. A new pitcher into the game, Ray Castillo for Alabama. He is the team leader in appearances out of the pen. This will be his 18th trip to the mound. 3 2, and he walked him. Bortles, his second walk tonight. Sykes Orvis, left-handed hitter. Sykes ready for a long ball, isn't he? When's his last long ball? Swung on, hit deep to right field. He's got every bit of that one. See ya! Showers in right field for the Ole Miss students. And the Rebels lead three to nothing. A two-run mob for Sykes Orvis. Felt like I had him timed down pretty well, and I uh, got a got a fast all over the plate. I was able to get my uh, get the get the barrel to, and uh, I know it's probably uh, one of the better home runs I've ever hit in my life. It's what you dream of as a hitter. I mean, you know, everything just came together. I mean, ball jumped off the bat, and uh, it's one of those you knew it was gone uh, just as soon as you hit it. Two batters later, Austin Knight would provide a lift of his own. Fly ball, left field, it's Austin Knight, and it's gone! Oh my goodness, Austin Knight with a home run. It definitely felt good. Um, you know, it was good timing after Sykes had hit his, and the stadium had already erupted, and everyone was, you know, it was really electric, and, you know, just got Swayze going even more than it already was.
the guys in the dugout were just going crazy. I was I was freaking out. Everybody was freaking out, and uh, just watching Knight, uh, his reaction was it was awesome. You'd have to know Knight to understand. Um, he always talks about hitting dingers and hitting home runs, and he had never hit one here yet. And to see him get his first home run, I couldn't have been more happy for him. With a four-run lead, Weathersby would take the mound in the ninth, determined to shut out the tie. Fly ball right field to Sean. Two down. This is what you live for as a short reliever. This, this last strike of the game. The 0-2 pitch to Houston. Strike three call. Clean in the outside corner. Houston takes it looking at Ole Miss wins. Four to nothing. It was a great feeling just to have the fans behind me, have that clap going for the strikeout, and then for everybody to explode and get fireworks after. It's an awesome night and an awesome SEC environment. With the series victory clinched, the Rebels would keep their sights set on Sunday and look to finish the series with a bang. Hey, congratulations, and you know, it was a terrific day. We played, we just played better than them, and that's what it's about. We just played better than them for 18 innings, and I'm proud of you. You know, you know this was all about pitching, and uh, you know, of course, where's Bramlett? He's done, he's done with the TV to get your shirt. Not, 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 you know, and of course, Scott at the end. But big home run by Orvis, and, and of course, Knight. Ro, Ro Coleman doesn't have his, uh, you're tied with him now, right? You know, we're not here just to fit in. We're not just here to be a part of it. We're here to be great, right? Not just good, not just average, not just win a game so you feel good enough, all right? Let's make our run. Let's continue to sprint. Can we sweep somebody? All right, let's do it. Hats off. Nice job. It was a lot of fun. They said, like, the sixth largest crowd in school history. So on double-decker weekend to, to do something like this and have a chance at a sweep tomorrow, it's a pretty good feeling. Got a boy. Thank you. Thanks, Earl. Thank you, Game Time, man. Thank you very much. Who do you want on the inside? Yeah, I'll just have a mask. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all liking it? Y'all want to get in the camera a little bit? Say, hey, Rebel Nation. Hey, Rebel Nation. <laughs> Today from lovely Oxford, Mississippi, one of the great college baseball rivalries is renewed. The Alabama Crimson Tide and the Ole Miss Rebels meeting for the 400th time on the diamond. And today the Rebels are loose as they go for their three-game sweep. After being shut out the night prior, a hungry Alabama offense would strike first. Stokes has had some inspiring moments for the Rebels this year, especially a couple of weeks ago when he beat Vanderbilt. Gives him a line drive, base hit here to right field. On his way to third is Avant. He'll get in there, runners at the corners, and nobody out here in the first inning for Alabama. 1-1. It's a fly ball to right field. That ball is gone. Two-run home run, no doubter. He got all of that over the bullpen. And Alabama leads four to nothing. Now, well, Mike Bianco is forced to make a pitching change here in the first inning. With two outs, Jacob Waggis back coming in. All right, let's go. Let's go shut him down from right here, all right? Do the job for us. Come on. Stokes, the 0-2 to Wilhite. Strike three. Got him looking, painted the outside corner with that one. I thought Jacob was was terrific, and uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, we we fall behind uh, in the first inning. Uh, now you're down four runs, and you need somebody really to give you you know to, to to hold them down, just to give you a breath. And 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 Wags did that for us. He he was able to come in and pitch a little over three innings, uh, and something that we needed at that point to to, to give us a chance. 
Third three ball count of the inning for Wagesbeck. Swing and a miss, and he got out of a bases loaded jam. A huge strikeout for Jacob Wagesbeck, his second of the game. It stays 4 0. Down four and in need of a spark, senior Austin Knight would step to the plate and deliver. 2 0, and this has a chance to write. Hit deep. Gone! Austin Knight back to back jacks to end the game last night and his first at bat here today. You know, it's one of those, you get, get a good performance for Wags for a few innings, you get a big home run, and, and now you think you got a chance, and, and that's, that's what you need. You know, uh, you, you need that big hit, and certainly Austin delivered. This is tattooed. Woodman has left the yard. J.B. Woodman with his sixth home run of the year, and Ole Miss is within two. The Woodman's home run would keep the game close. The Tide would pull away in the seventh, an inning that saw three Rebel pitchers and six Alabama runs. just seemed like we kind of ran out of juice on the mound, but it happens in baseball. We held down a good offense, you know, for, for a long bit on Saturday, 18 innings, and, you know, now into Sunday, and uh, they were able to obviously get some timely hits and really expand the lead. And a little bouncer toward the second baseman, Overstreet. He'll glove and throw, and it's just in time for the out. Nice play by Overstreet, and Alabama wins the third game of the series. I mean, that's just, that's just been the thing. We'll be really good one, one game, and then we won't show up the next game. We beat Florida, who was number one, two out of three. We beat Vanderbilt at Vandy, who was number one, two out of three. And then we have some slip-ups. So I think for us, the big thing is playing our game, being consistent in the way that we play, both pitching and hitting. Down the stretch, if we just show up every game, uh, compete, play our hardest, I mean, I think we'll put ourselves in a really good chance to win and uh, just make a, make, a, make a push towards the end. You look at the last five games uh, last week that uh, we, we really swung it, maybe as consistent we've swung it all year long in five consecutive games. We, we need that. We need obviously the guys that have pitched well, the, the, the starters, Bramlett and, and Trent, and the guys out of the bullpen to continue to pitch well. And we're going to need another guy or two to step up out of the bullpen uh, to, to put up some zeros for us. Uh, and if we can do that collectively, you know, we're going to be in good shape. We've, we've, we've shown that we can beat anybody in the country. We just need to be able to play like that day in and day out.